Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Mouth Restores. Foxman plays <laughs> Car Mechanic Sim 2018. Well, you know, whatever we're calling it. I'm having a fun time. And uh, whatever you call me, you know, that's cool too, as long as we're friends. <laughs> Please be my friend. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, again, I'd like to apologize sort of for the last episode and that. I felt it was a little bit too lacking in maybe, uh, I don't want to say energy, because I know a lot of people are saying, you know, these videos have been chill AF, which is, is, uh, really cool to hear because that's kind of the approach that I've been playing and, and recording, um, them to be, you know, just a chill, relaxing time. So, uh, I hope though that the last episode wasn't just like too, like, I wasn't too out of it, but, um. You know, sometimes I get caught up in the moment and, and, and realize what I'm, or don't realize what I'm doing. Anyways, I'm recording this, though, pretty much right after the last episode with the, you know, bit of a potty break and all that kind of stuff. But, um, uh, and again, I mentioned it at the end of the last episode, um, but in case you didn't stay that long, uh, the reason I'm recording this right after is I'm going away this weekend, so I won't be able to record kind of daily, so I want to get a get a couple episodes going up so um basically that is to say if you had feedback during the last video i'm not going to be able to uh incorporate it into this one or talk about it in this one just because you know technically i haven't uh, been able to to read it and 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 respond to it so um i think though in the video after this one you know, that'll be recorded having seen your input from, from this one and the last. So just wanted to get that out there. Um, you know, I don't ever want people to think that I don't read their, their comments or I don't consider their ideas. Um, I absolutely do. And I also try to respond to as many comments as I can though. You know, sometimes it can be difficult or there might be a, a, a few days in between. Um, but you know, I just, just wanted to put that out there. Um, I, I very much appreciate you. Um, you know, taking time to, to, to kind of respond to some of the questions or conundrums that I, I, uh, have going on in these episodes. So anyways, um, what I quickly want to do is actually just go ahead and put on more of the parts that we can put on right now. Uh, and then we're going to go do barn and, and junkyard more quickly than we did in the last episode. I didn't really realize how how slow we were to get going on that stuff, but um, I would like to uh, to do that and then start working on you know restoring another car. So pretty much like this is again I don't like saying the word formula. Let's pattern. Pattern sounds nicer. It's kind of like you know a little more musical. Um, but uh, the pattern for these episodes are gonna be. Going to the barn and going to the junkyard still. Hopefully be be quick with that. Look for new cars to restore. We'll restore that, but kind of when we're coming back from the junkyard and barns and opening up cases, we'll be like, can we use that part on our on our uh, you know, our project whatever, project beast or whatever we're we're gonna end up calling it. But uh, it should be quicker now that we've kind of started to get the ball rolling on that, so so again, uh, yeah. So parts that we can put on. Actually, I think we can put this on because we have the right side door, if I recall. Uh, I'm going to start kind of building the engine, which means I can actually put the fuel filter on. Um, supercharger. And by building the engine, I just mean like on the engine mount. We can put this on. We don't need the engine block, so that's why I'm not going to take the supercharger just yet. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to put these guys on. Definitely can't put you on. Can't put you on. It's the right fender. Oh, wait. We have the right fender. Do we have the right door? I don't know. Battery we can fix. We can just charge that up, and we can put that in for now, which is pretty sweet. We have one rocker arm. That we can't put in yet. That we can't put in. Oh, we do have the right door. So we've got like the right part of the right side, which is nice. Oh, and there's the tail light. I think actually we can put in. I'll take you just in case. Can't put on that. Can't do that. Again, just in case, but I don't think we can do that yet. Uh, 
Actually, you know what I should do? Just take it all for now. It's quicker just to take everything. And then, uh... So let's first go and, and try and make any... Any of these guys. So this is the plus one. This is for the front. Okay. So I don't have the spring and probably the cap. Which is fine. Just, you know, thought I'd do that. Um, let's charge the battery. I know I've got that on me. There you go. So this is one we did find in the junkyard. It wasn't from, uh, you know, from the car originally. So that was the thing is we weren't using any of the original parts. They are still sitting here and it's not like we had all of the original parts. This is actually in pretty bad condition. So, um, there were some, some parts missing for sure. I don't remember if we have a servo. No, we don't have a servo. Um, I could actually just start building the engine here, but I kind of like the idea of, of putting it on the mount. So I'll do that because I could, you know, I could put the, the fuel filter right there. Um, let's get under the car. See what we can put on. And you know what? I'm actually going to switch out this uh, drive axle. Because we have the, the better one. Let me see. Do we have a, a better knuckle? Probably not. No. Okay. Wheel hub. Put that guy in. You know, it's just plus one, but it's still... Every bit helps. Oh, yeah. We only have the one ventilated. We don't have a tank, right? No. Um, there you go. Plus five. It's not a performance one, but still... Plus five is plus nice. Let me just again, take these guys off and double check because I think I might have had some. Nope. I know we had one of these guys. Yeah, plus one on that. Uh, we had some of these. No? Uh, I thought... Oh, front. Oh, that one I can't use. There's the double, I see. So we'll have to put that one back. Um, that's okay. The cap, we've got one of those. Very nice. Can put the spring on here. These we can't repair. Um, so again, because I don't have your feedback from the last one, I don't know what, what our stance is going to be on buying certain things. We only need two rear springs, so should we try and hope we get one in, uh, in a crate? Or should we, should we buy one? I don't know. Um, actually I should just double check. There might be some stuff we can repair. Alright, let's, let's try to repair Nice. 100% success rate on all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that cap we can't repair. We can't put the other spring and cap on because we... Or the, the absorber cap because we don't have the spring cap itself. Don't have another one of those. We don't have any of these, right? Nope. And then... Uh, Definitely don't have the cross member D. Cross member D is nuts. Let's go. That's nice. Although we can't put the sway bar end links on until we have some uh, other stuff going on here. Steering rack, we have one of those, right? Yes, plus two. 
And you can't get a performance one of those guys, so, um... So, yeah. I think that's that. And then the engine is the... Yeah, the two-carb supercharged dealio. So, let's just go here and we'll start creating that. And that's not really going to have anything on it except for this guy <laughs> i mean I'll, I'll gel in um yeah i mean I, i'd love to get a performance one of those for sure let's just double check our inventory here a supercharger this timing cover pulley there's the rod cap there's a camp strap we had another one that we tried to repair but we failed which sucks because we can't repair this one, it's 13% and needs to be at least 15. Start is good. We repaired that. We've got some belts, ignition wires, the pan, some piston rings. There's the alternator and power. So actually, oh no, you can't do those until you have the freaking engine block, which is a major bummer. Uh, there's the oil pit. So I'm just going to sell this one now. I forgot to do that. And we only need one. So let's just put these guys back for now. I'm going to keep this here until we make another engine. And then we'll just put that in a crate. Again, it's literally, literally just a, a fuel filter sitting there. But um, All right. So there. That's nice. Now we know where our other parts are going to be. And, uh, you know, we can start grabbing them. Once we have an engine block, that's gonna that's gonna help us take a lot of these parts and and uh, do them. Uh, I'll save the body parts so we can put those on right now. I think without issue. Could I not put that guy on? No, we have to do the wheel hub first, right? Yeah. No worries. And yeah, taillights, you can't repair those, so. Um, it's at least there. And then the right door. Let's just lower this guy now. Excuse me. Get sipping my drink as well. It's the right side mirror. Fully repaired, thank you very much. Fender wasn't so lucky because it's 12%. So that's, that's that. We've pretty much got most of the right side, except for the, the headlight. Yeah. So now I don't have anything in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly run off to, uh, maybe instead of going to the, I mean, I do want to go to the junkyard and yeah, we'll just stick to one barn, one barn, junkyard. And then if we don't find uh, any newer cars that we want to do, we'll go into our parking garage. We'll pick one out, and we're gonna we're gonna have a good time with it. Cause I know I've got some decent ones in there. I wouldn't mind giving a go. Did I? Oh, this I do have to. I do want to write down a list of the cars I have. Um. So I don't buy them needlessly, but. I don't remember if we have this, but I like this one, actually. This might even be a candidate for one we could do a, a restore on. I'm going to buy it. And you know what, for now, let's actually send it back to the garage. I know I bought an El Camino. But this seems like a... I have the Bolt Atlanta. I don't have the Bolt Atlanta Trespasser. So I'm absolutely going to buy this. Absolutely. This, it looks higher up, eh? A little bit, maybe? Maybe I'm going crazy? I'm not going to work on that today, but now it's mine. Got you for the rest of your natural born lives. Okay. I feel, uh, I'm feeling good, though. I'm feeling good. Mm, 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 mm. This is a smaller barn. Much smaller. Then, well, no, this is the medium sized barn because it has two cars. Some have one car and some have three cars. Uh, 
All right, so that's that though. This is a nice brand though, dude. Okay, that's done. We'll go back. We'll open. I'm just gonna open up the case right now. See uh, if any of these parts tickle our fancy. We might even just get another map in there, which is always good. Mo maps, mo parts, mo cars. No problems with that. That's what I always say. You got more money and you got more problems. Maybe you should just give me some of the money. Yeah, look at this. This is... What is this based off of? Is this some other type of Mustang or something? Or something completely different. It's nice though, right? I like... I like it. I like it. I mean, I know... I know... Names and stuff of a lot of classic kind of muscle cars and and such and and some of them I certainly recognize um, Since they're on me off, but I do like I love I Love these headlights the grill is very nice. I love the rear too. That's actually where a lot of um Kind of older muscle cars and stuff get me like I don't like This as uh, this top line. I don't mind but I don't know, just kind of this space here just throws me off, right? Whereas this, it, it's a little bit lower, comes to a nice little taper. I mean, I still like this, especially the front end, but this is pretty sweet. It's got these little, little flare doodads there. So yeah, if we don't uh, actually, this is, if we don't find anything else that I really want to do, this is the, the car we're going to do today. But... Let's ah open up Put the lime in the coconut. We got another map, which I actually don't mind, because the only other way to get map, other than finding like one in the entire junkyard, I've only ever found one at a time, is um, to like complete customer orders, which is usually you know pretty quick. Uh, unfortunately, here we didn't find. Uh, parts that are applicable to this car so i'm just going to go ahead and put these in our <sighs> our warehouse here also oh, might sound a little cheesy but just to say i i love you guys just putting that out there something a little positive for the internet you know there's a lot of negativity out there these days i'm not necessarily going to say there's more negativity um, than traditionally there has been because people used to like duel each other over things and like one would die sometimes I imagine both would die it's like if they're both really good like draw and they both shoot each other in the neck or something like that at the same time and it's like well nobody wins <laughs> you're both just a bunch of dummies but anyways I guess what I'm saying is ooh la la nope that's another factory five don't want it don't want it, although that's still worth a good chunk of change, but, um, hello. McLaren 570S MSO Carbon Roof. I've never seen one of these until this very moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is buy it. Because I can... And it doesn't mean I'm ever going to do anything with it. Like, there's a there's a good amount of cars in this game. It doesn't mean I'm always going to, uh... Like, I'm going to restore every single one of them. But for the time being, because we have so much bank... Uh... If I see something that I haven't seen before, I'm probably going to buy it. And then I'll decide later if I'm going to keep it or, or... Or what to do, so... But yeah, there's just... Oh, I went to a barn. I meant to go to the junkyard. I'm an idiot. It's okay. This is fine. This is fine. I mean, we did find that extra map right there, so... Um, unfortunately, I'm not finding extra parts. <gasps> I'm actually... The thing, even though I'm, I'm not using this... For... No, I'm not going to buy that. Yeah, I'm not using that for anything. There's our case, though. Um, I got excited though because there's a performance part and then I was like, oh no, I, I can't actually use that. 
Uh, do we do this one? Yeah, so we've, we've done everything. Alright, let's leave, but junkyard, junkyard. Although I will quickly open this crate. But yeah, my point was, is like, I mean, yeah, there's still a ton of negativity and stuff in the, in the world. I, but it feels like there's more, but I think it's almost like, it's weird because also like our population is the greatest. So like more people is a potential for more negativity and stuff. But relatively like on a per capita basis, I feel like there's maybe, hmm. Is there less negativity or just less problems? But we hear about it all because of social media and stuff. Um, social media is definitely not, uh, not perfect. So that's what I'm just saying. I love, I love you. You know? Because everybody else out there is all like, ah! They're fighting on the internet. We don't need none of that. <gasps> Let's go! Timing chain! Have we found the one? Uh... Yes. Time and cover, time and chain. He's done it. There you go. There you go. I don't think we had the timing chain either. That, look at that. That's for the Zonda. Uh, let's just double check here. Yep, that was the only one. Plus one quality. Again, you know, these aren't like superb quality ones, but... Uh, Better nothing, and you can't buy performance timing chains in this game. So, junkyard, 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 junkyard. I'm gonna try to be quick about this. Especially now that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm slowly remembering exactly what kind of parts we're looking for with this car. Um, front knuckle C. We need knuckle covers for sure. Uh... Inner tie rod, outer tie rod, we need this, actually, I think we have one of the front sway bar rear end link bees, but we need a second one. Um, it's the R2. At last time, last episode, we found a lot of Bolt Reptilia R2 parts, but R R2-D2, not home. There you go. Oh, it's only 11%. I'm still going to take it, though, because we can use it as, like a, a, as a placeholder item for now but that's the second one we've got one and it's a quality part but we also need to find the springs so i am again gonna try to be quicker about this this time valve push rod it's the wrong one we just need the normal push rod bottom suspension arm we don't want b we just want bottom suspension arm right actually just in case because i don't absolutely positively remember um so yeah uh, super tight belt another absolutely wrong uh, yeah i just feel like in these uh junkyards they give you a lot of these like rare parts you, you hardly ever use and all the, the the common ones like the v8 ohv parts because there's like 20 million v8 ohv variant engines in this game but they're like no we're never gonna show you an actual V8 OHV block, you know. Um, so yeah, we don't need idle rollers. Uh, idler rollers, it just sounds, feels weird to me to say that. And again, I said it last time because we found another like Ferrari 250 LM part, but I would love to find the actual car so we can start building. See, look at this ignition distributor cap in line 4C. I never, I never use these. Never. Just give me a normal distributor cap. Oh, we need one of those. Get 11%, and you can't even repair them, but it's a placeholder part. All but the placeholder parts. Gearbox performance. Can't use it. Race tire. Nah. Hello to you, Mr. Volvo. We have the 123 GT. I mean, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy that. Heck yeah. I have a family of Volvos. Bunch of turbo bricks, dudes. Yeah, that's right. I know about turbo brick. What do you want to do? You want to fight about it? Huh? Huh? 
Um, <laughs> no, let's not fight. Let's hang out, eat poutine. And a list. How does that song go? Um, upper suspension arm. Thank you very much. Need that 13% though. There's definitely no repair in that. So now we know 15% is the cutoff. And, uh, that just fills me with confidence for some reason. Engine head, wrong one. Just, 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 just killing me. Another fly. Last time we were here, we found a flywheel. Just for, it's freaking Bentley. That's what I'm saying. We're not finding the normal flywheel that we're going to use on 95% of the cars in this game. That's the wrong front exhaust pipe. We need the V8 OHV A. It's, you know, it's a subtle difference, but he's learning. He is learning. Uh, ba -ba a lot of Volvo 242 parts. Actually, front steering knuckle D. No, we need the C. I need the C. And I want the money. Dun 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 dun. I want the money. Bam bam bam. Dun dun. Sorry, I'm air drumming right now. Um. This is the wrong one. I think we need the. I'm gonna take it anyways. It's cheap. It's cheap. Just in case. Just in case. Though. More R2. More fast pack. Again, last time we saw a lot of fast pack stuff. So I'm I'm kind of thinking. I'm eager to see what your your feedback has been during the last episode and is gonna be this one because I said maybe we do another long term restoration project with the fast pack. Pretty nice looking car. I've already got one sitting in the parking garage. And every time we're here, we're seeing so many Spectre Fastback parts. It's uh, it's crazy. Also, I just want to show you this. This The 2017 Ford GT. Crazy beautiful car. But I love it. This is the taillight. But you actually see this little mesh in there. That's also like airflow going through. It's like a dual purpose thing. And they, they have it on both sides. I can't remember. One's for like some type of exhaust or airflow and one's for something it's just like it's crazy man i don't i think it's it's kind of cool seeing dual purpose uh parts like that <sighs> get the game. more of the stupid bentley but the freaking bentleys are killing me man see more fastback what did i say what did i say we should have a tally i love these rims by the way love them we're gonna, I'm going to do that Bolt uh, Chapman someday. That's like the Pimp Mobile. We'll definitely, definitely be doing that at some point. Um, let's come on. Let's try to speed this up a little bit here, Mikey Mikey. It's a problem when I start talking. Because then I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, and then I have to slow down, and then it's a whole issue. Um, there's another one. 15% all right, so We might we might be able to uh, Success or repair that you know, I'm not now hold my breath, but it's 15% and you can repair those so Bottom there you go. It's 10% though. So it's just a placeholder part It's a placeholder. I got to remember which uh, rims we're actually looking for about those see this is the other part even if we do find the right, like, I so often find it's like 24 inches. This one's 21 inches. Like, what are you, you're killing me. I'm not making a monster truck here. You know, dudes? I ain't got, I ain't got time for that. Although, it'd be pretty cool to make some monster trucks in this game. I'd give it a go. I'd give it a fair shake. And look at this, another distributor cap for, like, yeah, I know it's for the Mazda, but, like, come on. Give me just a normal one. Alright. Okay. I feel like I'm slowly uh, picking up the pace. What? Oh, this guy? This is, like the, this is the Nerdmobile. This is what Garth drove in uh, Wayne's World. It's, like, the blue, and then I think they had flames on it. I just over no I wasn't I wasn't back here right nah 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 
Um, uh, McLaren Bolt Engine Head. Just, just please give me the block. All I want is the block. But they're not giving me the block. You know what? I might start moving uh, this whole junkyard part into the the end. Sorry if you can hear that very loud plane outside, by the way. Uh, to the end of these episodes. Hate that. Um, and then that way, uh, you know, if maybe, maybe you don't care to see this part, then, uh, you don't have to do it, and you can still see the restoration before. Otherwise, you can always just skip through the video to the actual restoration of the, the car. I think we are gonna do the, um, that bolt that we have back there. Um, I'm gonna try. We need another one of those. And then, uh. And I don't necessarily have to check all of the junk piles, but I'm kind of like, well, while I'm here, while I'm in the mode, I kind of want to do that. I just don't know what else to do. See, that's the wrong piston. Again, it's for that stupid freaking Bentley. Stupid Salem Spectre. Yay, yay, yay. More Volvo parts. It's gonna be a long and grueling process. There's, oh, there's another trespasser, but we just got one, which was actually in better condition. Um, engine head, push rod for the Bentley. I'm so mad. Look at this, another off ignition distributor. Guy. They're trying to kill me. They are actually trying to kill me with anger. Placeholder part. Nice. At least we're finding some placeholder parts. Oh. Wait. I don't think... Well, one, that we can't repair it, but... I don't think we can use that. But we'll see. Shaft cap, nope. Nope, nope. Uh, fuel rail, secure it. Got the Shelby. And. Oh, we need one of those? Okay. Oh, what I wanted to talk about, by the way. I, um, I think I already have two of those, but I'll take another one. I finally got um, a capture card. The saga of the capture card. So I originally had, uh, oh yes, he's done it. I had a, uh, what well, percent? No, 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 don't go back. No. 15, we can repair it. Ah, uh, perfect, perfect. So a while back, I got a PS4. It was great. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I've been playing a lot of NHL 2018 on it, and I got uh, God of War. God of War. Thank you, Maya. Um, great game as well, which I still need to finish. Um, had a, a little bit of a lull because I've been playing way too much Car Mechanic Simulator. But um, anyways, when I got it, uh, NHL 18, I was playing that with Northern Lion and Dan Giesling and, and some other peeps. And, uh, you know, the, the plan was also to record some stuff for YouTube. And I ended up getting a, uh, Elgato HD60S, um, external capture card. And I was like, you know, uh, a lot, it's a pretty popular one, uh, enough people have bought it and seem to be using it, whatever. I didn't think too much more of it. And then, let's go. Good stuff. Two parts in one pile, baby. So I got it. It arrived. Uh, tinkered with it for a bit, and it, it actually seemed to work. It, at first, it was a little finicky, but I was able to record some stuff, and it was fairly smooth. Just a couple little blips, and... As they have a capture audio, I got it, got it all working. It took longer than I would have liked, 
as well uh, to get it set up and, and working. But I did kind of get it working and it seemed to be fine. Do I need that? I don't know. Actually, I think I do. I think I do. Um, so I got it. And I set it up the day before we were going to have a recording session, too. Because, like, that's, well, that's the, I just happened to get it the day before. And then we went to record. And it just wouldn't work. It was, like, laggy beyond belief. Sometimes it wouldn't even, like, actually capture. I was just having a, a fit. It was, it, like, ruined the whole session for me. Because I was, you know, trying to play and trying to play well. And, um, um, but at the same time, I was trying to solve all these technical difficulties I was having and all that. And I was just like, I was so frustrated. So I, I returned it. I had bought it through, uh, through Amazon. Um, returned it, got my money back. It was fine. Um, but I also had like, uh, Amazon... I have the Amazon gift card for that. Yeah, I think I did. So, you know, some of the money, like, I couldn't just, like, use for other stuff. I was like, well, I gotta get something from Amazon. So I just kind of let it sit there for a while. Um, and then I did a bit more research, though, because it's like, there's some pretty sweet games coming up for PS4 that I, uh, not only am I going to be playing them, but, like, I'd actually like to be streaming them or maybe even, uh, uh, do some, some, some YouTube stuff, depending on the game, but, um, but yeah, that means I gotta get another, uh, capture card, so I ended up going with the Avermedia Live Gamer HD 2, or whatever the heck it's, it's called, but it's the one, you know, you put it right into your, your PCI slot in your computer, and, uh, it doesn't even need any uh, drivers. I was like, whoa, that's cray cray. Um, so it came, it arrived a lot earlier than I expected. It, it, it arrived earlier, um, uh, today. And so I, uh, you know, pulled my computer out from its nook, took the, uh, the side panel off, popped it in there, you know, put the, the panels back on and you know, turn the got it all powered up again, and you know, you know, you want to unplug the power and t turn off the power supply switch and all that stuff. You know, I got it back in and pulled it up, opened up uh, XSplit, LOL XSplit in 2018. <laughs> but you know, anyways, I'm making transition to Streamlabs OBS. You know, it's just taking time. Um, anyways, found the source immediately. Turned on the PS4, boom. That was it. It was, like, incredible to have something work immediately. And work well. Um, I recorded, uh... Let's go. Some, uh, NHL 18 just as a test. You know, I've been doing the, the, the Be a Pro. Actually, I don't need that part, but whatever. Um, been doing Be a Pro, and... It's been uh, fun, uh, so I, I did a little test recording and uh, it worked, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And be a pro. I've been doing the um, like I actually started. For those unfamiliar, it's like basically be a pro is you make your own character and then you go into depending on what you pick. Like you can go pretty much straight into the NHL draft to be drafted by a team. Or you can, you know, pick a pick an age within a, a few year range, um, and start kind of like in the minors, and then build your skill, and then you're going to be scouted after, you know, once you get closer to, uh, um, you know, uh, the appropriate age, and then uh, you get drafted. So I went. I think you can start as 15 years old as the youngest. It might is it 15 or 16. Definitely 16, but 15 might be. But either way, I started as the youngest as possible, and I played through... Yeah, I think it was 15, because I played three seasons with the Kingston Frontenacs, and I just 
Oh, let's go. Um, was killing it. Breaking all sorts of records and all that stuff. And then I, uh, I got drafted finally by first overall, of course. Like, come on, who else? And uh, I got drafted by the Carolina Hurricanes. Wah, wah, wah. Now, actually, like, right now, going into uh, this new, like, real-life season of um, in the NHL, the Hurricanes are actually pretty good. They have a really good uh, depth on their blue line. Um, you know, they've, they've got some offense. Like, they're not the worst team out there, that's for sure. Um, nobody is going to be like, oh, these guys are a contender for the, for the cup kind of thing or, or what have you. But, you know, they're, they're an okay, okay-ish team. But still, not a team I've ever been, uh, a fan of in, in real life in general. And I don't like their logo that much. It's just kind of like, meh. But, uh, anyways, I'm probably like halfway through my first season. I missed seven games because, uh, of a broken nose. Um, in a fight I won, I will just say, I know I already have one of these, but I'm taking it anyways, because I, I want to. Also, I'm, I'm barely paying attention to what I'm doing right now, and I'm going extremely slow, so I apologize about that. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, broke my nose, so I, I was out for like seven games, so I've, I actually only played 39 games so far. I have 182 points. <laughs> I'm only playing on semi-pro though, so it's not like um, super crazy. Um, I'll I'll play on a harder difficulty, probably in NHL 2019 because that's coming out um, in a few weeks. But um, it's great. I have like three times as many goals as Ovechkin, who is uh, you know second in the league for goals. I mean he's doing pretty well too. But, uh, he's not me. He's no Michael Fox. So I'm pretty much single-handedly taking the Hurricanes to the cup. Right now, we're like, we've lost four games, and those were games, uh, while I was just unable to play, again, from the broken nose, so. You know. But, uh, it's just fun because I haven't played sports games in so long. I used to play it all of them on the computer back in the day when EA was like a decent company and then actually we need we need that clip gotta have it um yeah but then they're like yeah we're just gonna make all our games console only and like I like playing sports games on consoles but at this is it like a any sort of type of content creation and stuff like that if I can play something on PC and for record it easily for youtube or stream it then like that's great but now it's like oh to to you know do uh console stuff you need capture card right and you know obviously uh i'm not super fond of dealing with capture cards for the most part based on my experiences with el gato but uh anyways long story short now i can do all sorts of that console stuff and I'm excited and uh actually I think we need the end link B but I'll buy that anyways so yeah I'm uh, uh happy about that so I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to um well, Spider-Man's coming out in a few weeks definitely actually we'll, we'll end on that side uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and, uh, you know, I don't think it's, it's probably going to be too long of a game or something anyways, but I think it's going to be fun just to kind of zip around, and, uh, it looks pretty good from, from the videos I've seen and, and all that, and then play that, and then, uh, then I've got a lot of NHL, and then Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out in October 20 something 23rd is that the right date maybe I'm wrong but it's October I remember that much and I'm gonna play a lot of that and I'm gonna stream or record it for YouTube I don't freaking know but it's just nice that I can do that oops oh this is a car I can buy oh bull trap we already got that bad boy sexy as it may be 
Uh, I guess I'll probably be able to check that car from the other side, but... Uh, yeah. What are some other... That's my question for you guys. What are some other games coming out uh, that I'll be able to get on PS4? That one that you're looking forward to, and two, you know, maybe I should uh, keep my eye on... I would like to do that. Uh, clip another clip B is a, you know, again, a placeholder thing. We can repair them, but the ones that I found here, are, I think, too low of quality. Respect my authority. And let's just finish up here quickly, which means I'm not going to try to talk about other stuff too much. I apologize. I just want to go and build that freaking car and and have fun with it. Have it BK, have it your way. That's something I really just like hate. So companies come up with these like extremely shallow, cliche, typical kind of slogans, and I'm just like, stop it, stop it. And I hate. I w I kind of wish somebody would give me money and I could make them a commercial. Like, this is what real people want to see. Well, this is the problem, though. I mean, they do all do market research. And the crappy commercials they put on, there are people that like them. And they fall for that garbage. The slogan could be like, you know, what's a product like? Oh, I'll just make something up. Avalon glass and doors. We're simply the best glass and doors. Like, that could be their slogan. And some old lady's going to watch it and like, I guess I better... 100 Avalon glass and doors. I gotta buy them. They're simply the best. That's what they said. You know. And I hate it. Let's go. Left fender. He's done it. We got the right fender. Now we got the left fender. Hoorah. But you know, it just kind of bothers me. Because uh, I would make commercials that are kind of fun without being just like out of touch fun you know you also see those commercials um that are just like just like dude like pump your brakes settle down you know actually i think <coughs> excuse me i think i have like a quality one of those but I'm taking it anyways uh no we need wheel hub three wait wasn't i just in this pile yeah Okay, we're almost at the end here. I'll get faster and faster each time, I promise. Promise you your money back. Alright. Heart rate. I think we got these cars from the other side. <clears throat> yeah, I recognize that engine head. From, from. Uh, Alright. We are... Out of here. Five parts. But um, yeah, commercials. I just like, I don't know. Give you can you can ask me to make you a commercial, theoretical commercial. I'll do it in five minutes, and it'll be better than any of that crap people pay tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars for. It's just like, all right, here's one: perfume and cologne commercials. They're all like. It's the same thing, and I talk about my my, my one uh, my oldest brother when we're hanging out at my parents. Also, let's check the quality on this. So we're missing some spark. We said we're not starting this guy up. Um. Uh, Oh yeah, I also got to deal with. Some of these parts. I'm just gonna repair everything I can. I don't think we use the bottom suspension or RB. I think it's just the normal one, but. He's done it. Um. Let me check my inventory here quickly.
I've already got a fuel filter, I know, but I just felt like grabbing another one. Uh... Again, I think what I'm going to do here is... Um... Actually, let's see. Some of the stuff we could put in. The upper suspension arm. But yeah, like the commer like a, a you know perfume cologne commercial. Like I, you know, you see these patterns or the, the formula that they do for certain commercials, and I always point it out to my my one brother. Hmm. So yeah, I still don't know what your guys' thoughts are on buying rubber bushings, because this is gonna be pretty difficult if I have to. I haven't even found it. I don't even know if we can find rubber bushings. Alright, for now I'm breaking... I'm not really going to say I'm breaking the rules. Because if you guys say no, you can't buy rubber bushings, I'll take them out. But for now, it's the one thing I am going to buy. And then maybe with the valve, like push rods and rocker arms. I don't know. Um... Just, uh, it's gonna take so long to find. I didn't actually need to buy that many, but um, especially because I want to use 100% bushings. So any that 100% ones we could only get from crates, and that's gonna be extremely rare. So I don't know. But I think you can find them in crates. I just don't have any. Thought I had that. No. Okay. Let's see. Um. So we can do the other. S there you go. We were not able to repair it, or I guess it was too low quality to begin with. But at least we can put that guy in place as well. That we also couldn't repair. Um, so it's that. Oh, we got one. Okay. We all have three. Guess I could just look at this. So there's body parts. Still can't put any of that crap in. Brakes. I can... I'm not going to worry about doing yet. That guy, but we need the spring and the cap. Which we have neither of. Can't put these guys in yet. Again, I think it's that one. I could check, but... I'm not going to worry about it now. That I can't do. And then engine... Definitely can't do any of this stuff right now. Okay, so that's fine. We've, we've pretty much done what we can do. For now, I'm going to put everything else just in here. Even though some of it we won't be... Isn't applicable to the car, but yeah, it's close enough. Here. All right. But yeah. So I always like to point out, <laughs> to continue the story, the formulas of the commercial cars, you always see like cars winding, th or car commercials, winding through like mountain roads and, and countryside and you know, just very nice. But there's always like forest and mountains and like by the water. They try to get like all the major ecosystems it seems. Um, colognes are almost always or clones and perfumes, like, on the beach. And I get it. You know, whole ocean, smell, whatever, sand. It's like a sort of cleanliness sort of feel. I don't know. It's sexy. Everybody's, like, half naked and all that stuff. But, like, I don't know. I almost feel like, I don't know. You, it'd probably be better not to let me make your commercials because my cologne commercial would be, like, some dude sitting in a rundown McDonald's. And like, 
he I don't know, hell would be breaking loose. There'd be like kids everywhere throwing burgers and fries. Babies crying and poop on the walls and just nasty. But then you'd hear this like super sexy narrator, you know, like the Marlboro Man or something like that. And you'd be like, yeah, life is tough. But when you smell this good, you just don't care what's going on around you. <laughs> something, you know, just something really bad. Like, I don't know. But the point is, it's just like, even if it's a crappy commercial, in a way, it's amazing because, you know, it's different. When I see a, a perfume commercial or a cologne commercial, I don't pay attention because they're all the same to me. And I'm like, how are you actually differentiating your product from any other i don't know anything about it all i know is it's like it's called like b by calvin klein it's like what does that mean what does b like b e what does that smell like uh, if at least if he said like bees i'd be like ooh, honey or you know it, it kind of maybe gives me a bit of an idea maybe it's like because bees you know they're insects and they're always flying around it's kind of energetic so maybe i think of like a more kind of not pun pungent uh, kind of cologne or something, but just something that's, you know, it kind of helps you figure it out. But what does, like, B, B, E, what does that mean as a scent? Yeah, maybe it smells good, but you're not telling me that from the commercial other than, you know, it's like some hot dude and some hot chick. And you're like, well, that's great. But like, what am I supposed to do with that? And I guess, you know, you could probably say, well, the whole point of the commercial is like, I don't know, to lure you in or make you curious. And then you're going to go to whatever department store and then like smell it. And you're gonna be like, oh, yeah, that actually smells pretty good. Like, I wish the commercial wasn't dumb, but I just hate it, though. It's like, stop dancing around. I'd almost have like. Maybe instead of the McDonald's idea, it'd just be like, just, uh, oh, you know what would actually be like a pretty cool kind of take on it is, um, oh, dude, actually, this is a pretty smart idea. I almost don't want to say it, but it would be like, uh, you know, maybe picture like the French countryside. All right. Nice. Rustic little kind of I don't want to say a shack because that sounds bad, but just like simple home um, You know, it's still nice kind of outside summery time Maybe well it actually might depend on the, the perfume or cologne, but It's nice time is simple kind of just simple life and all that and then you get a, a, a Dude, you know guy or girl. I don't care, but like they're like a sommelier, right? There's people that taste wines and are like, oh, there's asparagus in here. And you're like, what? I taste grapes. <laughs> um, but there'd be a sommelier and they could be sitting at a table and picture the camera, right? So you don't actually see kind of what's, what's quite in front of them. But at first you, and maybe you actually see like a bottle of wine off to the side and uh, you know, some spare glasses or something. So you're like, oh, he's, this is a commercial for a wine or something like that. What's going on? But you don't actually see, you know, even what the wine is. You wouldn't see, like, the label or anything. You just see kind of, like, a bottle and all that stuff. So, for sure, you're like, hmm, like, wh what brand is this? What product is this? And then they start describing it. And as, as like, the sommelier is describing it, it's very slowly panning down. And um, it's, uh, you know, they're like, and they're explaining, you know, like, I don't know what you put in cologne and perfume. Like, I know all that stuff is probably super synthetic or whatever. But, like, hints of lemon and lavender and da-da-da. And, you know, kind of things, too, that you're thinking, like, oh, yeah, I guess that could be in wine or some kind of drink. Um, and then by the time they get, you know, maybe to the ingredients that are not in wine... You're like, wait, what? What's going on? He's talking about like s sandalwood and 
mahogany aromas and and uh i don't know whatever other other things or whatever but and you're like what and then boom you know they take their hand away you know maybe you can see it in their hand as it gets down towards but their hand is kind of covering the bottle and then they put it down and then i don't know actually i feel like they put it on before they put it on down they they do the spritz on their wrist or whatever and then they do the whole thing on their their necks as well from the wrist you know you spray it on your wrist rub your wrist together and then you rub the wrists on the neck sides of the necks um and then it they put it down and walk away maybe there's like some coffee or something too on the table you know just all these other these very aromatic things right they just kind of get your your smell kind of working because scent is the one sense most closely tied to memory right so i'd want to have a lot of stuff that people would see visually and then they automatically think of the smell of it right so yeah maybe stuff like coffee you know people even i know there's some people out there that like don't like coffee but they love the s smell of coffee i've known people that have actually brewed co they brew coffee every morning i'm not making this up they don't drink coffee they just brew it every morning because they love their kitchen smelling of coffee which is kind of odd to me but um you know whatever but the point is you'd have a few of these things kind of not necessarily like super right up in your face either just very subtle but as you're maybe if you're one of those people who who kind of visually inspects all parts of a scene and and the commercial you'd see these different things that get your senses your 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 nose kind of tingling you're like oh man but then yeah they put down the the bottle simple bottle nothing crazy and it wouldn't have a stupid name like b or you know number five um it'd be like i don't know something that, that at least kind of hints towards what it is a little bit you know it doesn't have to be crazy detailed like i don't know but like i i feel like you know I kind of feel like tom draper a little bit here um but no i feel like that actually be like a pretty decent commercial and 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 I'm obviously biased because I just came up with the idea, but I feel like if I saw that, because I notice when commercials do stuff different, like I'm always kind of criticizing in the way, like that's a stupid commercial. I'm never going to buy that product because they freaking, if you're going to advertise me something, like do a good job of it. Like even if I know the product is good, a lot of times I'll be like, well, that commercial is so stupid. I'll never use that shampoo ever again. Um... But yeah, I feel like if I saw that commercial, I'd be like, oh, interesting. I actually kind of want to check out that cologne now. Because they decided to not be typical and boring and just nonsensical and have a bunch of people running on the beach and then saying the name of their poorly named cologne in a very sexy voice that nobody ever actually talks in. It's called B by Calvin Klein. Nobody talks like that. This makes me think that dude is constipated or something. <sighs> Anyways, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if anybody out there has any involvement in commercials and you want kind of like the high caliber stuff that I just proposed, all. Mind you, I also am taking apart a car at the same time, so I feel like, you know, if you actually want me at 100% capacity, I may maybe make the greatest commercial of all time. You are listening to the writer and producer and director and small part actor in the highest rated short film in IMDb history, Dragon Slayer Doppelganger. So if I can do that, I mean... I'm sure I can make one hell of a commercial. I'm just joking, by the way. 
Well, not really. I mean, technically, Dragon Slayer Doppelganger is the highest rated short film on IMDb. But it's mostly because the community, the NLSS community. Crazy dudes. I mean, it's, it's, great. it's a great little movie, though, like, you know? Totally 10 out of 10. Would watch again. I'd probably watch it, like, 20 times myself. And that was something that also was just filled with, uh, things. One, I forgot to bring the battery charger. So we had to shoot everything. Like, we had a few takes for some of the stuff. But for the most part, we had to be, uh pretty quick and film everything within like I think it was two hours might have taken three hours but it was two or three hours and you know we had a few fight scenes so you, we had to do the choreography and and then try and get that right and and uh um you know I wrote the script on the train ride down which is like two two and a half hours so it's not like uh Spent a ton of time agonizing on that. And then uh, the soundtrack. Oh my gosh. Might be the best soundtrack that's ever been in anything. Such variety and depth and... And just everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. It's, it's, it's all good. But no, for real. Like, that's just my... my um, perfume commercial now this is going to be a thing i'm going to start like as we're playing this game i'm going to start talking about uh, ideas i have for different product categories like what i would do for commercial for for like and like cars you know again cars are are pretty sim. i mean you see the odd one that's like different um a little bit but, uh, again, a lot of them, it's just like, you know, whatever car, it doesn't matter. It's a Mitsubishi, it's a Mazda, it's a freaking dot. Well, okay, so there's kind of like subgenres. I was just going to say, it's not all, usually if it's like a car, a nice car, maybe kind of slightly luxury or whatever, you know, you have the driving through forests and, and then coming out and then you got mountains and then you keep going a little more and then they're in like some kind of desert and you keep going and it's like by the ocean, whatever. But when it comes to trucks, trucks, it's like, I'm a big, tough guy. I'm going to drive it on to the construction site. And then you're going to see, like, some kind of, uh, um, like, uh, like a pile of dirt is dropped into the back. Or, like, a bunch of equipment is just dropped in and all that kind of stuff. Splashing through mud and going up around through kind of, you know, sort of rough terrain and all that stuff. But... I'll, again that's all the trucks are are like that and then of course they all go and they they say like you know best fuel efficiency in its class two years running motor trend 2017 truck of the year and you know whatever else and then the other you know ram does this thing and then chevy does this thing for it and they're all like we got the most biggest cargo space in the back we got the biggest freaking rims on any truck in production of all time. Just like they all like kind of have their one or two things that they make sure they're the best at so they can talk about it in the commercial. And then you're like, oh, that's the truck with the, the heated seats. I guess I'll buy that one. You know? Well, I mean, you know, heated seats are nice, I'll, I'll admit. But um, what am I doing here? What are you doing? All right, let's repair this sucker. I don't know if I'm going to do performance engine. I think I might just start with... Uh... Actually, I've already got some engines already made, so I could maybe just chuck one in there. And they are performance engines, but... You know, we can always... Uh... Swap it out. Where am I going? Carlifter A. Did I have a battery? I do. But that's the thing. I'm just sick and tired of seeing the same old, same old. Because I, I never know. I never differentiate. And it's like, but really, which truck do I get? I guess I'll just get the one I like the look of the most. Because I, 
you know. No, I mean, I wouldn't buy a truck. I, you know, I do my research. I bet my research wouldn't be based on 20 seconds of commercial. Right? And some of those things, they, they go on and on about. It doesn't even matter, like, you know. Oh, you know, they always go on about most towing capacity and, you know. I mean, obviously, fuel efficiency and stuff like that is important. But, like, you're never... For the most part, your towing capacity, like, you're not going to max that out. I feel like any one of those relatively large trucks, you're going to be happy with the towing capacity. They're all going to be pretty similar. It's like, okay, this one, it can tow 10 more pounds. Like, is that what you, you're going to buy it because it can tow 10 more pounds or 100 pounds? I don't know what the difference actually is, but I'm just saying, like... I don't think the differences actually make a difference in terms of like what you're going to be doing with any one of those trucks. And they all have the same options and stuff. So maybe it is like, you know, for the most part, if you like the look of this one more and the, the company is generally, you know, good quality and they don't have a ton of recalls in the past few years and stuff like that. And they seem reliable, but, you know, I don't know anymore. I don't know. It's a weird, I don't want to say it's a dying industry. It's a, it's a, there's major shifts going to be happening in the industry, you know, in the coming decade and a bit. That's for sure. All right, let's check the engines. Let's check it. Check the sneaks. So we got, we got basically all the OHVs. So like I said, I could just drop one in, but I kind of want to make one because that's the whole point of this. The other ones are more, I'm going to kind of keep those there for testing. So, um, I know from my little cheat sheet here, let me check something. This is the, um, bolt rollet, roll a, um, alternate fenders. So I kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll probably buy that stuff. I'm not sure I'm necessarily going to deviate from whatever's uh, factory, but... um, Where are the hoods? There's just the one hood. So basically, that's certainly going to be removing the supercharged one from, uh, from our options. This actually, it go... By default, it is the two-carb OHV, and that's kind of like... If I'm going to put in performance parts, this is the one I want to go with because we can go from 306 horsepower and then once you add on all the performance parts, we're going to be closer to 600 horsepower. I could put in the Hemi, which is 425 horsepower by default, it might be a bit less or a bit more in this car. But when you put in performance parts, it only goes up to 544. So it, you gain uh, 120 horsepower, which isn't a ton. Um, but that, it's just because there's not a lot of performance parts you can get for that engine in this game right now. So I don't, I don't know if they're going to add more. Um, so I guess that's what I got to think think about do i want to put performance parts or not or the ohv 6p which would be 390 factory you know i'm actually going to put the ohv 6p because i i like the look of it it's uh dual carburetors and and hey Ah, no. I'm not going to swap. Because this is, I, this, yeah, let's do the, no, let's do like a proper restore. So I'm not even going to use performance parts. Yeah. And again, if we decide, we can always change that, that later. But let's, let's, um, let's do, uh, let's do a, a stock factory default. Yeah. For this guy because this is muscle cars classic we'd like 
want to get it kind of original. We're going to be going crazy on this bad boy anyways. Shoe fly, get out of here. Little fruit fly. Um, so we repaired this. All right. I have to, uh, oh yeah, I have to put this guy. It's the old engine. There we go. There you go. Let me just double check. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, I have to repair my parts. Takes a while. You know, I kind of like that they force you to click every single time, but I almost wish... There's like a repair all button too. There's a sell all button. In your inventory, so why not a repair all? Now, if I was doing a commercial like for a car. I mean, you still want people, you want people to know like the, the whole point of any commercial Ultimately, it's like to get people to buy your product or your service, right? What I, I almost think that the easiest way to get them to do that is if you just tell them specifically what makes your product or service better than another one. And the easiest way to do that is to just try and make the product or service as best as you can. And that's kind of a problem for a lot of companies, especially when there's so much competition. Cause like, well, some of them, they don't actually want to make the best. They just want to make, you know, home with the highest profit margin, I guess. So it's like, you know, a lot of the products are kind of mediocre, but I mean, I don't know. The other thing too is like commercials, like, Again, you watch like Don Draper do you do all that stuff in Mad Men, and they're all like, it's, "You gotta make people feel something," and it's all about nostalgia, and that's that's true. I think nostalgia is a very, very important thing, but nostalgia and just like, it's different. If I see uh, a commercial for a 2018 Ford Mustang, that doesn't really make me feel nostalgic for like. A 1965 or 1969 or whatever like year but like you know an older Mustang you're actually gonna feel nostalgic about right so like you gotta kind of weave that in and uh, I mean maybe you have like the old Mustang and like your old man is uh, yeah it could be like father son or whatever so you're kind of showing that whole like bonding thing people love to see that right but you have a, the you know the um although i don't know ford would actually want this because there's the whole like thing like where a lot of these car manufacturers stuff they don't want people repairing and fixing their own cars they want them to like go to like ford certified whatever but i still think it'd be a good commercial and i would prefer to see it but like you'd see the father you know this old dude fixing up his original ford mustang you know just cleaning it and you know he's got the hood up and he's kind of tinkering around in there and stuff and maybe at one point you see he gets in sits in the seat and he's like revving the engine and you you hear that sound that's how you get the feeling and the nostalgia and like so you're gonna have some old dude sitting on the couch watching this commercial and they're like oh dang it bobby that's a Oh, I remember that sound. Oh, yeah, baby. And, um, you know, it kind of, that's, that's the nostalgia right there. Because they see the old car, they hear the old car, um, and then pan over to the side. And you see, like, you know, his son working on another, a newer Ford. The one that they're actually trying to sell now. But they're still showing him in there. He's working on it beside his dad. And, you know, there's obviously going to be some differences in how it looks. But there's also going to be, you know, 
I think there should be some similarities there. You know, they're trying to make all these new age um, muscle cars and stuff, but I, I think, uh, you know, part of what makes people want them now is because they kind of are similar-ish to the ones of yesteryear. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of see the resemblance, and then he's tinkering with it and, and cleaning it, whatever, and then he gets in after his dad, and then he starts revving the engine on the new one. And then you're like, oh, that actually sounds like it sounds good. Maybe it doesn't sound quite the same, but it's still, you know, it's not too dissimilar. And that's how you, you almost like you're convincing people like, all right, this is new. But it's kind of tying in that nostalgia, you know, at the same time. And plus the whole bonding thing, father and son and or, you know, mother and daughter. Like, you know, I'm not trying to you know, be politically correct or this or that, but like, yeah, I mean, you can, you, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? Like, um, oh, crap. I think I need that one. Yeah. Timing chain OHV. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like it's not that hard to come up with commercials that would actually make me like, be like, damn, these guys get it, you know? I would like to buy their product now. <laughs> but that's just, uh, you know, and I could go on and on. And I probably will because it's nice to have something to talk about and to think about while I'm building these, these here cars. You know? Oh, dudes! I'm not going to do it now or i might not ever do it but um i'd actually like to try and make a commercial using this game because there's the abandoned airport or there's the parking garage and stuff so i mean i wouldn't have the ability to have like actual people in it I mean, you know i could do a voiceover and uh and then maybe maybe i'll actually like tweet it to uh well, because there are, there are the Ford cars in here. There's the newer Mustangs, actually, the Ford DLC. And then, obviously, there's some of the older ones. So, maybe I could actually do sort of that commercial I just talked about. Um, but, uh, I'm just going to buy that in advance in case we didn't repair it. Um, so, yeah, it's like... Uh, I feel like that'd be something fun to do. Need eight of those and eight of those. Need the. Uh, valve. Oopsies. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. This. We're going stock. Factory. No performance parts. This is probably repaired. Oh, it was too too crappy quality. Damn. Probably need that because you can't repair that either. Um, what are this? I mean, yeah. So, what are some other commercials that are very much always the same and always kind of lame? Like, you're like, I don't know if I should buy this product over that one. I feel like, um, even though it's kind of the same, um, they do mostly a good job, like, uh, like candy bar commercials, right? It's like, what are you going to do? They, they show slow motion pictures of, like, caramel drizzling down and nuts falling from the sky and, and chocolate being drizzled over and stuff. Like, they're showing you the, the ingredients. So you kind of get a good idea, you know, somebody's eating it, they got a smile on their face, they're having a good time. That'd actually be, um... That'd be an interesting one to try and work on and make a little bit different. Because it's like, it's, they're sort of, you know, they're not being cryptic or whatever, but at the same time, it's hard to differentiate yourself. You're like, well, these are the ingredients, you know, and it's pretty tasty, like, here's some people enjoying... 
Um, the product. Uh, VA OHV, let's just do that. So yeah, I mean, there's some commercials. I also feel like if you can make orange juice commercials unique and good, I feel like any comp, any orange juice company, not even orange juice company, any company that needs like an ad person, you gotta get that person. Um, because right now, I mean, it, uh, you probably noticed this as well. Any orange juice commercial is just like, you know, simply orange or Tropicana or, or any of the other brands are like, we only have one ingredient. Pure, freshly squeezed orange juice. And you're like, cool. And they're like, no sugar added. Cool. And I'm like, so why should I buy Tropicana over simply orange or um, over this one or that one? That's the thing. And they can't talk about that in the commercials because it's like, that's all they all are. It's just like a different name and a different packaging, but ultimately they probably all get the same, the oranges from the same freaking orchards and stuff too. So, uh, you know what? Well, how do you, how do you deal with that? See, my, my tac tactic would be, I would, I would somehow like to prove that our oranges are actually better or not even necessarily saying they're better than this well i mean and you also do see i think it's tropicana where they go to the actual orchard or one orchard and there's the farmer dude and they're like you know they see you see them picking the oranges off of the tree but i i feel like i'd almost go more in depth and it'd be like no. These trees grow in ancient topsoil that's been getting more nutrient, you know, fertilized for hundreds of thousands of years, and it allows our trees to grow strong and produce the best oranges ever. Um, I don't know, maybe something like that kind of tactic. Or, um, what else could he do? Maybe a fun one is like, um, it's like our orange juice is so good that, um, you'll want to replace water with it for everything. Oh, yeah, so that would actually not necessarily be like a good commercial in terms of like actually selling the Well, maybe I don't know that's up for the people to decide but So just picture it this way you would have like So like everything that you do with water you replace with the orange juice So they'd show a few examples in the commercial. So like so yeah the tagline. Oh, the orange juice is so good you want to Replace water with it and uh, oh I started typing water um <clears throat> so you'd have uh, a guy like in the morning dude's taking a shower and out of the shower head it's orange juice and he's having a good time and then you know how sometimes like you're in the shower and you like open your mouth and you like, get the water but it won't be water it'll be orange juice and be like ah and then you'll swallow some and it's like oh it's great and they're like brushing the teeth and then instead of rinsing with water he rinses with orange juice which would actually be horrible so maybe don't show that one um, you know, maybe, a, and then, like, a little kid is like, Mommy, I want a boiled egg. And so the mom gets some orange juice and pours it into a pot and then brings it to a boil and then gets the egg out of there. And, uh, and then, or, like, maybe, like, Oh, Mommy, I want some tea. So, he, like, boils some orange juice and then, you know, pours it out and then puts the tea bag in it. I mean, this is one of those things that could just, like, the thing is, though, like, it would actually break some old lady's mind. She'd see it, and she'd be like, maybe actually think to, like, 
she should make tea with orange juice instead of water. So, you know, there'd probably be some issues with that. But I still think if you did it right with the right kind of situations, maybe it's it's not the worst kind of thing. And it, it does get past that problem I'm saying of, uh, you know, every orange juice commercial is the same. Like, I don't know which one to buy. They all taste perfectly fine and good to me. So, like, if I'm buying one in the store... I'm pretty much going to buy whichever one is there or, you know, they might not have all the brands, but they might have more than one. So then in that case, I'm probably just going to buy the cheapest one. But if you start putting out some banger commercials that I actually find kind of entertaining and and like you recognize your the own issue, like that you're not able to sell people orange juice just by, by saying like, we only use one ingredient orange juice. Like, it's like, I kind of expect that. Like, I don't want you adding other stuff. Don't brag too, like the only one ingredient. Oh, times are hard. Or like, it's so difficult for us to only use one ingredient. We're the best because we don't. No, that's what people want. They don't want added sugar mostly because you don't need to add sugar to orange juice. It's perfectly fine it is. You don't need to add anything else really we just want the orange juice um so i don't feel bad for you so if you start like actually just having fun with your commercials instead i'm gonna buy your product i mean when it comes to orange juice at least right because it's not like well this orange juice is better they're all the same man they're all the same Let me check something here. Okay, am I? Um, so yeah, I think that'd be like a pretty... There you go. I solved, I've solved the orange juice thing. There's one idea. I could probably come up with more. And again, this is... I'm freaking dealing with carburetors here and ignition wires. And I'm coming up with probably like best commercial ideas of the century. Where is my check? Where is it? The song's a banger. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should do that on YouTube. I'll just have like a little mini series every once in a while. I'll make up my own version of what I think a commercial should be for that product category. So I'll, I'll make my orange juice commercial where there's like, that'd be tough to rig it so that orange juice comes out of my shower, especially because I live in an apartment, so I can't really just like go around changing the, you know, pipes and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I could probably figure it out. I'll just like Photoshop it, you know. Photoshop the video. No big deal. <laughs> um, anybody out there know how to Photoshop videos? Uh, LOL. But. Yeah. Just silly to me. I just feel like. All these commercials. They're just. It's so formulaic. And they're like. Well market research says people love. Seeing our Ford F-150s just powering through a big old pile of mud and getting a bunch of wood and rocks thrown into the back. They love that. It's like, well, maybe they do, but what what else is there? You know? What do you want them to say? It's like, no, I like the other, you know, the Chevy commercial where they're also going through mud, but it's different mud. It's a little bit deeper, so I like that a bit more. And they throw more rocks in the back of their truck. So, you know, they're better. It's like, what else are they going to say? You know? Your market research is crap. Actually, I think I need more than one, but... <sighs> so just hire me. All right, people. I will make all of your wildest dreams come true if you vote me, Pedro, for president. 
For Pedro. For Mouth. Did I do everything? This is going to be another long episode, isn't it? It happens, you know? That's what happens. Uh, okay, take it off. We'll put it in. Now things will go a bit quicker. Now I got to think of another commercial that I want to do. What are some typical ones you see? Um, that's the one. Yeah. Go here, away. Uh, fixed it. Fixed it. Charged it. Oh, did I not put on the clutch bearing? Ah, it's fine. I'll do that after. <sighs> Let's just focus on this beautiful car. I actually like this color. I, I might, uh, again, maybe we will go with something other than metallic, but probably just kind of, probably just keep it. The tank, we got to buy a new tank. Maybe, uh... <clears throat> Not the fuel pump, though. We can repair those if it was good enough condition. It was not. Fuel pee? Fuel pee? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just mostly sick of... You know. Companies and people and stuff, it's just like... That's just like, they fall in line. The stupid, I don't need that many small rubber bushings. Let's just get eight. Um, they're just like, they're so happy with this stupid, boring status quo and following the lead of other companies and other people. It's it just bothers me. Just do something different. Do something good, but it's not, it's never about the product anymore. Nope. I mean, it's sort of, they want you to think it's about the product. It's not about the product. You know, they can make better products, but they don't. They could innovate, but they don't. And it makes me angry. Break drum. Caliper. I mean, we might have repaired. Oh, whatever. We can just sell any excess anyway, so. Alright, the wheels will go on. Leaf spring, did we do that? Yeah, we got both of them. What about the U-bolts? Three for four. Not bad. But now I gotta buy one, and that makes me sad. Uh, no, you can't repair those. Rear shock. Bay. Double V. There. And we'll do the exhaust after. Let's get the rest of the, the rear end done here. Leaf sprang. Chicken wing. Oh, I could go for some chicken wings right now. Leaf. You bolt. Okay. It's gonna be a pretty sweet car though. I mean that's that's what I actually kinda like too is like now if you wanna see it certain cars are like with certain engines. You know? We can have them made up all nice and then we'll say, no, let's just do quickly swap out the engine. All you gotta do is take out the drivetrain and take off the gearbox and then and then pull it out and Put the new one in. Sometimes you gotta take off the uh, front exhaust sections and all that, but you know, it's, it's pretty quick. Especially when the other engine's already made, too. So we could definitely do that. 
Solid rear drive axle. Did I do? Yeah, I did that. Okay, okay, okay. Drum the brake shoe. Drum itself. And then the wheel, which we'll do in a minute. Alright, so we got rear muffler, the middle muffler, front exhaust. Okay. Let's see here. Rear muff OHV. Duh. Middle muff. Duh. Front exhaust, OHV, section A, duh. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Again, just a good old standard. He's done it. That was easy. Did we repair? Ugh. We did not. Cross E. Okay, well, it didn't sort, but that's fine. I always like to put these bushings in the bushings in first. So otherwise, I'll forget if I uh, don't put them in right away. And then I'll go and do other stuff with the car, and then I'll put oil in this and that, and I'll be like, Oh, it's 99%. What did I forget? That's always it. One tricky little rubber bushing. Front sway. B. And two of those. Oh, we also need inner or tie rods. Inner. And outer. Do you have an innie belly button or an outy belly button? I'm an innie. I think most people are, are innies, right? I wonder what the actual number is, though. The ratio of innies to outies. What's it like? Like, having lived your life with an Audi belly button. Is it any different? Let's never get caught on anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I don't know. Any, any, you know what? A lot of people are like, oh, any. I wish I had an any. Do you? Sometimes, you know, you get little bits of lint. Stuck in there, and you're like, oh man, gotta get that out of there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Alright. Oh, I bought the wrong brakes. This car breaks for no one because it can't. I didn't buy the right brakes. Better. So caliper. Oh, we did repair the the previous two, but that's okay. Got both upper suspension arms. The double wishbone. So we'll go and do that in a second, and we'll do the tires, and then uh, Bob's gonna be your uncle. And you're probably thinking, oh, the <coughs> oh God, <coughs> I like the fruit fly. <laughs> <coughs> well, <coughs> there's a little added protein for my diet today. Oh, um, what was I saying about Bob? Yeah, but everybody's always being like, eh, and Bob's your uncle. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. This Uncle Bob. I've never met him before, and if he exists, all I'm gonna say is I'm expecting 30 years of birthday presents and Christmas presents and, you know, this and that. It's gotta take me on at least, you know, one fishing trip for every year he missed, so that's 30 fishing trips. We've gotta get started there, Bob. If you're my uncle, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in the time. Freaking Bob. Meanwhile, every actual Uncle Bob out there in the world is just like, oh man, all these, all these people all over the world saying I'm their uncle. I can't take it anymore. 
<laughs> I can't afford any more gifts and I don't have enough time to go on all these freaking fishing trips. Jeez Louise. All right, all right. French spring. Let's do it to it and let's get our cap. Let's do these guys and then uh, see what we got to do for tires. I'll just get this over with quickly before I start doing the tire stuff and then forget that I, that I got this here. And then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Oh, good stretch. Oh, there you go. All right. Vintage tire, 205, 75-14. 205-75-14. 205-75-14. 205-75-14. 205-75-14. 205-75-14. 205-75-14. 14. Crap. I forgot. Wrong order. There. I didn't want to write it down. Hey, 420. Blaze it. It's already even race tires. Jeez Louise. Alright. Uh, I'm going to uninstall these, though. I should be able to repair those rims. Uh, unless something crazy happens, but... I'll buy one if I need to, and if I don't, well, then that's just great. That's just lovely. Um, hold on one second. I'm just checking. Okay, sorry. Let's check my phone. Got the messages in the Discord. Discord. All right. I'd love to just, just get somebody give me a million bucks. I'll make the best commercial ever. Well, not the best, but pretty good. I'll make something nice and iconic. You know, people will be talking about it. They'll, they'll watch it at home. They'll go into work next day, and it's all everybody's going to be talking about. Like, did you see that? I didn't know they could make commercials like that. And I'll be like, yep, I did it. It was me. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, you made that? Yep. <laughs> I have fun. I'm, I'm mostly entertaining myself. I'm not actually trying to sound arrogant or boasting because I'm sure the commercial would be truly awful. But I like to think if I had a, if I had a good shot at it, I could actually make something like, okay. It certainly would be different, though. I wouldn't follow the mold. Absolutely would not. Like, revisiting the, the Cologne perfume commercial. Like, I would do something, you know, what I was saying earlier with the sommelier. Or, it would be the beach thing, but it'd be, like, a hardcore porn commercial. But, like, everything would be blurred out. I mean, it still probably wouldn't get on TV, but... They'd just be doing it, like, doggy style. And I'd probably call the perfume, like, doggy style on the beach. That'd be the name of it. I bet people would buy it, to be honest. They'd be like, it's a crazy commercial. I feel weird watching it, but I sure as heck want some doggy style on the beach perfume. <laughs> uh just fed up with this world, you know? We live in such a freaking phony world. Doesn't that bother you? I'm sure, it, like, I don't think of it all the time. But I'm thinking about it right now. And I guess that maybe means you're thinking about it too. But, like, don't you just hate how phony the world is? And, like, we have all these stupid, certain, like, antiquated social norms and societal paradigms and you're just like what the heck dude freaking so inefficient too just the way we do a lot of stuff and I don't know it's 
why I'm always now I'm always talking about dude if I win big money I'm buying my small island for a few hundred thousand you can buy you can buy private islands you know they're not necessarily gonna be the tropical area or anything like that but northern Ontario you can buy cheap smaller islands and I'm building my uh, sustainable island compound make my own social norms There we go. Oh yeah, sorry, I gotta start torquing stuff appropriately. I always forget. So here's the star pattern. Boom. 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 That's how you actually... That's how you actually do it. I change my own tires in real life. You don't have to believe me, but I do it. It's honestly not hard. The hardest part... Is like I'm... Crouching all down, because, you know, I'll do it in the driveway at my, my parents' place. Is, there's a, you know, you've got these five holes for these, these bolts. But on the inside of the, of the rim, there's, like, a notch hole. Like, the hole doesn't go all the way through. And then, you, there's, like, a pin. And you gotta line up the pin in the hole, but you can't actually see the hole, so you gotta... Sort of line it up, and you kind of got to feel with your finger, and then you lift it up, and you, you're just like, oh, please, just like, get on there. Just freaking get on there, and then sometimes it doesn't, or it slides or slips. You know. I'm pretty good at it after so many years, but when I was first doing it, I was like, what the heck, man? This is baloney. Did I do everything? Global parts. I'm missing... Ah, yeah. Shock absorbers, the shaft, <laughs> lol, and, uh, whatever the gearbox. Let's get these bad boys before I forget. Oh, yeah, that guy. I thought I bought you. I thought I bought you. Clutch. Release bearing. Oh, we repaired it. We're so good. What about the starter? Bet we repaired that because we're pretty good. Oh, we're so good. Shaft? Of course. We're on a hot streak. Three for three. Three strikes, you're out. Except in here, we're in. Complete. So, let's put on our panels. We're going to have to buy all new glass and stuff, so I'll, I'll do that now. And then we'll, we'll save the interior for last. Um, actually, yeah, go to the store here. So what, first I'm going to buy... I just kind of want to see how some of this stuff looks. So I do, I think, want to keep this factory. But, you know, sometimes it's just nice to see. So we'll buy glass for sure, because we pretty much know we're gonna have to do that. Headlights and taillights. And then anything else that we were unable to repair, well then we'll, we'll buy that on an as needed basis. See so that's 96, you know, it's not bad. But it's not 100, but that's 100, because we can repair those. So let's see what the original looks like. Actually, here, I'll put the original on this side, and then we'll do, uh, this modified one. It's kind of a little bit harder to tell because we haven't painted it. And on the blue, it won't stick out quite as much as if this were, were like, red or something, but the silver is... It's actually kind of nice. You know what? Screw that. You know, I like keeping stuff factory, but this... This is like, maybe it's like a factory option. Let's think of it that way. It's not so much aftermarket. I don't know. It's nice. Plus, it's not such a crazy, crazy difference. It's not like a huge spoiler or something. So, headlights. A is got the silver. This is like white. Huh. 
I'm confused. Let's put in the original one here. This one looks like it's actually got like a little black ring. Or does that get colored the same as the car? Let's wait. Paint the car and then then we'll make a make a decision. Then we will decide. Rear window. That's a movie. Bumper. This is now f four, right? So tail light B is actually. I don't know. The only thing is. It doesn't, this little center guy, it doesn't match, so. So I don't know. This thing, I almost wish we could take that out and, and get rid of the red there. But I, I mean, I do like them. I just, because it clashes a little bit. Uh, let's see it with, uh, ultimately, I think that just because of the centerpiece has a bit, that, that kind of looks a little bit better in a way, maybe. It's, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's a tough one. Oh. Yeah, let's actually do that. Because that matches this thing here. Looks kind of nice. Again, it's not too crazy different that you might not really notice it right away and be like, oh, that's not factory. Uh, we need the license plates, the seats, yeah, so let's uh, buy that now, roll, beautiful, and, oh, and the, this guy, so California, because they don't have Canada. Well, they wouldn't have Canada, but you know, Ontario and Quebec and BC and all the all the provinces. But they have none of them. Got all the provinces for Australia, another Commonwealth country, but no, no Canada. But that looks good. Oh, I forgot to put mouth four. Darn it, I'm a dummy. All right, mouth. Maybe I should do like Roman numerals or something. Go back and revise all of them. That'd be pretty cool. Just gotta take this guy off. This guy. Excuse me. What the heck? There you go. Bam. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do. Let's go with the original. Cause it's got the silver too, so it, it kind of matches this little bit there in the the new. Uh... Um, mirrors. What? Front right and front left? Didn't I? Am I going crazy here? Did I not buy those? Okay, I guess I am going crazy. All 
Alright. Let's put some oil in this bad boy. Get her over to the paint shop. Get her on the dyno. Take her down the speed track and give her a little twirly whirly in the air porty. And then end this video. This is a long, long, long video, you know. That's okay. I've come up with some pretty great commercial ideas. I've had a fun time. We found some more parts for this bad boy. And we're going to keep going. Keep going. This is some more barns in the next episode. Get quicker through the junkyard. Yeah. What did I do? Oh, I put you in the dino. LOL. Do that after. Got a process here, buddy, and you better stick to it. Or your ass is grass. Alright. Set factory. Let's just see. Not Matt. Pearl, I mean, I think Pearl works well on some cars. With this color... Oh, so let's just see. Oh my. Oh my. Alright, racing stripes. Ah, uh, those racing stripes are a bit too far apart for my liking. Let's just paint it with the chameleon and actually walk around it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell with that camera. This makes it seem a little lighter in the front. Well, just makes it. With this shade of blue, like, it, it's not as, as drastic, but I'm definitely seeing some very light hints of green. Very, very faint. But it's like a silvery blue. I, I like it. I'm going to keep it for now. I know it's not factory, but you know what? It's better than factory. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sure. From room. So we're expecting factory 306 out of this engine. And that's what we should get because we didn't use performance parts, so. I mean, again, I could get this up closer to, uh, it'd probably be just shy of 600. But then once we add in, uh, you know, performance exhaust and the performance fuel pump, I think it would definitely be over 600. But let's just uh, see how she feels. Again, this is a nice relaxing restoration for now. Yeah. Vroom, vroom. Speed track. Let's go. This guy. Oh, man, I am pooped. I am pooped. It's a long video, man. It's I was, like, saying, oh, man, these videos are going to get shorter. I don't know about that. Yeah, that rear end looks pretty pretty okay. This is actually where you really get to see the, co the, the color. Yeah, that looks nice. I like the chameleon because it's kind of, like, metallic, but it's just... Damn. fence is in the way but that's nice oh that's nice from the top too I really like that Five point three. you know we could have put some better tires on this guy and we'd probably shave a couple couple uh Tenths of a second off. Um, no, not bad. We'll take it around the airport just to see how it actually feels, but... It's a nice looking car. Skirt! Oh, there we go. It's ruined. Throw it out. Sell it. Don't even sell it. Nobody would want it after that. It'll never look the same. Tick, tick, tock, tick, tock. Dun, 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 dun. Dudes, I'm ex so excited to work on this more. 
like I'm definitely going to have some episodes where I spend a lot more time just working on just this, but I still want to keep restoring new cars as well. But I'm just saying, I'm excited. The whole process. Uh, where was I going? Not off-road track. We'll do the racetrack sometime soon, but, um, you know, I don't really want to do that too much because it's not fun with just the keyboard. I want a racing wheel. I want a racing wheel. All right, ready? All right, all right. That's a good looking car. I like it. I also gotta pay attention to where I'm going. Oh, I also like zooming out and driving. There's something about it when it looks smaller. <sighs> Baby. We got all those trees growing in the desert. I never really realized that. And then there's like a house or some apartment buildings back there. You like this, don't you? It's pretty good smoke. I gotta give him that. make it through here without crashing with more horsepower we'd be going super slidey but this is actually somewhat competent controlling oh no I was hoping that uh, we'd stop a little bit sooner and I'd just like slide slide into one of these spots I'm going to sleep well tonight. Okay. Let's give her one last uh, hurrah. It's not bad. Not bad. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mind it. It's got a good sound. It's got a good look. It's got a decent feel. You know, it's got enough speed. It makes you, you feel alive while you're driving it without feeling like you're going to die at any moment because... Oh, that would actually hurt. Get ready. It's probably the best parking job anybody's ever done in their life. I don't know, I just like it. Color's subtle, you know. It's not too boring. Shiny. It's timeless. It's a mouth four. That's good. There's also the bolt roll it roll a whatever however it's actually said there's the f mill i think so uh i'll have to keep my eye out for that i'm pretty sure and then maybe that's one we can go a little more bonkers with all right going back to the garage um i had fun this episode and i hope you did as well i keep yawning Ugh. Oh my gosh. Um. So yeah. So this episode, last episode, recorded back to back. So again, uh, I'll be getting caught up with all your feedback and comments and all that kind of stuff. And I uh, should be incorporating them into 
the next episode. Uh, what else? That's mostly it. Again, if you have uh, uh, ideas for, for other cars that we certainly have, let's just take a look at what we've got right now. Um, wait. So, I've got another bolt that I guess that one I'll probably sell because, you know, I'm not going to restore that one. We just restored one, unless it's a different model, but it's not. So, uh, we'll sell that one. I guess I just bought it, not realizing that. Uh, there's still the Bolt Atlanta, which is the... Um, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. El Camino. But we've also got the Bolt Atlanta Trespasser, which is like a special version of that. Actually, that uses the the 6P. What does this guy use? Oh, the one carb. So the Atlanta Trespasser has got a, a bit of a beefier engine. Less of an issue um, for us because of now the, the engine swapping. But if we still want to stay true and do like factory rest restorations. I'm so sorry, guys. I keep yelling. <sighs> Then, uh, then, you know, we just use the, the appropriate engine. But, you know, we've got some options. Um, there's that guy. Shelby Cobra, I'd definitely like to do that at some point. Um, you know, again, a factory restore this one, but... The engine is... Yeah, I don't know. Also, Sam Spectre feedback. We might do like a long-term restoration of that just because like we find the parts for it at least the body parts a lot of them uh, pretty easily in the junkyard and stuff like that and it's a pretty nice looking car so i know but there's more cars for us to go out there and find there's a lot of like these super super cars that i haven't been finding in the barns and the junkyard um like i'm used to which is kind of weird but we're gonna move you back to the parking and we're going to continue with this bad boy a little bit more in the next one. And you're d this is my testing car, but I should probably just, I don't know, do something. Maybe put a, a different engine in because I hate seeing this pop through this this hood. I wish I could get another modified hood, but I can't. I mean, I like that hood. It's got the two little, little scoops there, little air vents. Anyways, that's going to do it. Another long episode. I had fun, though. I hope you uh, had fun as well, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out.